I shall welcome you formally at the beginning of the service. Uh, but may I just draw your attention to the end of the service. Um, after the uh, party has left the tower crossing, our stewards will invite you to leave the cathedral row by row so that we can maintain some semblance of social distance. Uh, and you'll be taken straight out into the car park where uh, the Lord Lieutenant, the Bishop and the High Sheriffs will uh, greet you there. It's very good to have you here. As I say, I will welcome you formally in a few moments' time. I'd ask you now please to stand as we receive the Lord Lieutenant. special service. Would you please be seated? The office of High Sheriff is a crown appointment that is at least a thousand years old, and it certainly existed before even the original part of this cathedral church was built in Norman times. Perhaps some of the early High Sheriffs of this county came to witness the cathedral's construction. We don't know. But we do know that many recent high sheriffs have witnessed its repair and development, and that through the course of a millennium, the work of the high sheriff and the ministry of the cathedral have been woven into the fabric of our community. 
So it seems entirely appropriate for us to be here today for a service in which we shall give thanks to God for Mrs. Patricia Thomas's year as High Sheriff of Herefordshire, and then witness the formal declaration of Mrs. Joanna Hilditch as her successor in office. We welcome them both, together with their chaplains, some of their family and friends. We are delighted that Mr. Edward Harley, Her Majesty's Lord Lieutenant of Herefordshire, is here to represent the Crown on this important occasion in the life of our county. And we welcome him and Mrs. Harley most warmly. We extend a particular welcome to His Honour Daniel Pierce Higgins QC, the Honorary Recorder for the City of Hereford, who will preside over the legal proceedings this afternoon, and we thank Bishop Richard for coming to preside over the liturgical elements of this service. We are also pleased to have representatives of Herefordshire Council and also to have the Mayor of Hereford with us. Their presence expresses their appreciation and continuing support for the work of the High Sheriff. Although the current restrictions mean that there is a very small number gathered here in the cathedral today, it's good to know that many people are joining us online so that they too may mark with us this significant moment in the Shrevel year. So let us begin by turning to God in prayer as we ask a blessing upon all who strive to uphold the Queen's peace in Herefordshire, and we give thanks for the freedom that we enjoy under the law. Will you please stand? King of Righteousness and King of Peace, we pray for those who are responsible for the maintenance of law and order in our society. By the grace of your Holy Spirit, help them to be diligent in their duties and impartial in their judgment, so that through their work the forces of corruption and wickedness may be defeated, the cause of truth and justice promoted, and the life of the community safeguarded. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now I invite Mrs. Thomas to give an account of her year serving in the office of High Sheriff of Herefordshire. Will you please be seated? Lieutenant, my Lord Bishop, Honorary Recorder of the City of Hereford, dis distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I've included a full review of my 12 months in the order of service, which if you haven't already found can be downloaded from the High Sheriff of Herefordshire website. My Shrevel journey began when in July 2016, Bill Jackson, the then current High Sheriff of Herefordshire, came to see me. <coughs> Don't be silly, Bill. What are you thinking? Me, the High Sheriff, I said, my eyes blinking. You'll be great. You're just what we need, someone from business to take a new lead. And back home at Penkham later that day, Richie asked, so what did Bill have to say? You will never guess. I'll give you chances plenty. He's nominated me High Sheriff 2020. Three years of planning was then to ensue. Suddenly the declaration was clearly in view. But by March 2020, a containable epidemic had become COVID-19, a global pandemic. Not for me to declare at the County Shire Hall, we were heading for lockdown. Would it happen at all? But my name had been pricked by Her Majesty's hand, so declared I must be, 
all was replanned. To Broad Street in Hereford, just seven assembled, documents signed, my hand may have trembled. And words were recited, a new version from old, but you still have to say bailiwick, as I was told. And with that it was over, no buglers fanfaring, no velvet or frills for when I was declaring. With two friends at home, we cracked open champers. Let's celebrate anyway, not put on the dampers. The next day I awoke, and I tried to fathom, am I the high sheriff? Did that really happen? After years of learning what sheriffs pursue, I found in lockdown there was nothing to do. Concerts, concerts were cancelled and meetings were off, everywhere closed due to COVID-19 cough. Not knowing the future, people were scared as cases worsened. We weren't just prepared. We watched on TV the daily debrief. There were so many stories of sorrow and grief. Nurses, doctors, key workers so gallant were pushed to the limit despite all their talent. We stayed home to save lives at Boris's behest, and we hoped that this would help save the NHS. And on Thursdays, with pans and spoons in our hands, we clapped for carers all over the land. But back to Shrevel duties, what was I to do? No one could tell me, and I had not a clue. I was saved by my friends in high sheriff groups. We shared our ideas. We were in the same loops. Send emails, make calls, get Zoom. Yes, we ought. But did anyone care what the high sheriff thought? Yes, some, they did. Connections were made, and from that day on, there was a confidence cascade. I found virtue in virtual, a relaxed way to meet. Time for more meetings, more people to greet. Working from home was now the new normal. One's top half looked smart, the bottom less formal. Chats turned to shopping or schooling the kids, with partners and cats taking part in the vids. Chief constable, magistrates, charity leads. I met all like this and heard of their needs. And so it continued from March to July. The diary was chocker, and time really did fly. Oh, at last came the easing and out we could go. I met real people with great projects to show. My eyes were open to a world I'd not known. Great work, quietly on, was what I was shown. I posted and blogged about where I had been, of the work of these people I shared. I was keen to let people know that we have such bounty of goodness and kindness filling our county. Each visit inspired me or made me feel humble. Tales of folks' lives that had taken a tumble. But who had help been helped up? Again to their feet, another chance, this time not on the street. Visits to market town mayors made their mark. I learned very soon they have wonderful clerks. Each town so different with its own special charm, all ensuring those shieldings came to no, came to no harm. Getting medicines and food to them was a big task, and of course every volunteer wore PPE and a mask. Community cohesion and kindness shone through, so many examples of good deeds done too. Ways round to do things, ingenious brilliance, showing Herefordshire's people are full of resilience. August, and a chink in restrictions allowed, a spot of fun fundraising as, as long as no crowd. The High Sheriff's foodie tour, a trip round the Shire, stops for refreshment and cars to admire. Complex arrangements. Things can be done if you think out of the box, and we did have some fun. October, just the job, my school's competition, provoking young thoughts of jobs and ambition. Art, word, and video came in as submissions of wannabe teachers, scientists, gamers, beauticians. November, and the Shrevel lecture approached, but lockdown yet again, an event was poached. But the speaker was game for a virtual delivery, and with luck and lots of technical wizardry, Lady Hale gave an excellent speech, and what's fact is that Daniel and I make a great double act. January lockdown, more diary rethinking, 
what can be done as time now is shrinking, all meetings by Zoom and Teams taking place, the end of the retrieval year gathering pace. From the High Sheriff's Fund, who will get an award? Many organizations I had on my board, contacting winners of just the job prizes, certificates and book tokens of all different sizes, working with Joe to bring from conception a box of goodies for a virtual declaration reception and the handover with such a mix of emotion. Relief and sadness, it's now all in slow motion. But I'm blessed and honored, my year like no other, in service to the Queen, but it's time for another. To step into these shoes and take on the title. So now let's hear the next High Sheriff's declaration recital. Joanna Hilditch, you have received a warrant under the hand of the clerk of Her Majesty's Privy Council, bearing the date the 10th of March, 2021, reciting that at the court at Buckingham Palace held on that day, Her Majesty the Queen was pleased by and with the advice of her Privy Council to nominate you and appoint you to be High Sheriff of the County of Herefordshire during Her Majesty's pleasure and requiring you to take custody and charge of that county and duly to perform the duties of High Sheriff thereof during Her Majesty's pleasure, whereof you are duly to answer according to law. It is now timely for you to take to make before Her Majesty's judge the declaration required by statute. Joanna Hilditch of the Witton Lions Hall, Kington, Herefordshire, do solemnly declare that I will well and truly serve the Queen's Majesty in the office of High Sheriff of the County of Herefordshire and promote Her Majesty's profit in all things that belong to my office as far as I legally can or may. I will preserve the Queen's rights and all that belongs to the Crown and I will process all the Queen's writs according to the best of my skill and knowledge. I will do right as well to poor as to rich in all things pertaining to my office. I will do no wrong to any person for any gift, reward, promise, nor for favor. And I will treat all people equally, respecting the differences and diversity of our communities. I will support and encourage all who give of their time, skills, and commitment for the benefit of others. I will lay aside all private prejudices and political interests. I will promote the peace, well-being and prosperity of this county and all its people. I will disturb no person's right and will truly and faithfully support the judiciary and all who maintain the Queen's peace, who administer justice and who protect and support their fellow citizens. I will uphold the ancient office of High Sheriff with selflessness, integrity, and leadership. I will truly and diligently uphold the good laws and statutes of this realm, and in all things, well and truly behave myself in my office for the honor of the Queen and the good of her subjects, and discharge my obligations according to the best of my skill and power. And I solemnly declare that the contents of this, my declaration, are true.
Hi, Sheriff. May I congratulate you upon your assumption of this ancient and honourable office in the service of Her Majesty the Queen. Hi, Sheriff. It is now your duty to appoint a chaplain and under-sheriff for the bailiwick of Hereford. Reverend Benedict Griffith, I understand that you will accept office as my chaplain during my term of office, and I therefore invite you to accept the appointment. Hi, Sheriff. I am privileged and pleased to accept your invitation to be the High Sheriff's chaplain for Herefordshire during your term as High Sheriff of that bailiwick, and will carry out my duties to the best of my ability. Mr. Wilding, I understand that you are willing to accept office as my under-sheriff for the bailiwick of Hereford, and I therefore invite you to accept that appointment. High Sheriff, I am privileged and pleased to accept your invitation to the office of under-sheriff for the bailiwick of Hereford during your shrievel year. Lord Lieutenant, ladies and gentlemen, the advice of the young aristocrat Tancredi in that great novel, The Leopard, familiar to many of you perhaps as an equally great Visconti film, was that if you want things to remain the same, everything will have to change. Some see this as a mere restatement of the equally well-known French observation, plus ça change, with its negative suggestion that no matter what you do, nothing will really change. I take it more positively as advice as to how you must act if you want the best of the present to be preserved. It fits well with the British approach to change. At least since the 17th century, we have adopted incremental change and avoided revolution. Notably, even after the outrage of regicide in 1649, it was decided within a few years that although that particular monarch could not be revived, the institution of the monarchy should be reinstated. The clearest statement of this moderate approach is to be found in the writings of Edmund Burke, MP and statesman much admired by a local MP, Jesse Norman. 250 years ago, Burke analyzed the dangers of the French Revolution with its commitment not just to change, but radical overthrow, and he correctly forecast the disaster of the reign of terror. By contrast, he encouraged tradition and respect for existing institutions and gradual change rather than revolution. This was to be the way to achieve progress. This approach does, of course, mean that sometimes change takes time. I note that the preamble to the Parliament Act of 1911, which curtailed the powers of the House of Lords, promised to replace the hereditary house with one elected on a popular basis. We are still waiting. The ancient office of High Sheriff is a prime example of this incremental approach. Originally closely involved in the administration of justice, she retains nominal involvement, but no power to do anything beyond the influence she can exert by reason of her status as a representative of the monarch and her own enthusiasm and encouragement. The new form of oath on declaration reflects her changing role. The justice system itself has widened to include not just the court process and the enforcement of orders, but attention to those involved in providing a wider social justice, the emergency services and other public services, educational establishments, and many voluntary and charitable organizations 
who do so much to make our lives comfortable. Before the events of the last year, most public services had been weakened by 12 years of austerity. None more so than the Ministry of Justice and the court service, closure of courts, reduction in the number of magistrates, and reduction in the availability of legal aid, and reduction in the fees paid to the lawyers engaged in criminal work, which are now at rock bottom. The effect of those reductions on the quality of the system is well set out in two recent books by The Secret Barrister. Both books merit close reading. When the lockdown came last March, it was of course time for immediate action. And the courts and tribunal service, notwithstanding its reduced status, has responded positively and speedily, and much justice is now dealt with remotely. Magistrates have adopted their processes and continued to hold hearings in court as well. The chief casualty has been the jury trial. COVID safe or socially distanced Crown Court trials have been difficult to arrange because of the space required, and there's now an even greater backlog than before. Hereford suffered particularly because of the closure of the Shah Hall by reason of the structural problems there. The usual activities of the High Sheriff have, of course, been necessarily been disrupted. The essence of her role was to attend events and meet people. Everyone likes to be visited and have their work recognized and therefore thereby feel valued. Our High Sheriff has been most effective in adapting herself to the virtual world, and she has told you what she has done and how she's done it. Initially, our new High Sheriff will face similar, but we hope, short-lived restrictions. The challenge will be to see what the new normal is that we return to. If anyone were to sit down today to write a new constitution, it is unlikely that there would be a provision for a High Sheriff such as we now have. The office has changed, and by its flexibility and the careful attention paid by the occupants of the office, it has prospered, and now provides a useful and dignified part of our constitutional arrangements. Respectful of tradition, but always prepared to change to ensure continued and valuable service. I'm sure that our new High Sheriff will continue in the same way. Thank you. Would you please stand for the prayers? Almighty God, we meet in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and pray for your blessing in the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray for the Church throughout the world, and especially for the Church of this nation and diocese, for Bishop Richard the chapter of this cathedral and the ministers and congregations of the Diocese of Hereford. We pray for the Queen's Most Excellent Majesty, Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, Charles, Prince of Wales, and all the royal family. We pray for the Queen's Most Honourable Privy Council and for her Lord Lieutenant, Edward Harley our national and local government, that they may each discharge their duties with all honesty and right judgment. We give thanks for the work of our outgoing High Sheriff, Tricia, and for all that she has achieved across this county in preparing young people for work. We pray for all of Her Majesty's judges, for the magistrates, and all whose duty it is to maintain and uphold the law and protect the civil liberties of all within this county. We pray for the leaders, councillors and officials of Herefordshire Council and the mayors and councillors of this city of Hereford and of Bromyard, Kington, Ledbury, Lempster and ross on Wye. We ask your abundant blessings on Jo as she begins her term as High Sheriff of Herefordshire, and especially on her intended focus 
upon the agricultural community within this county. We pray for Ian in his crucial supporting role, as well as for her officers and all who carry out the duties of the Shrivels, that they may be filled with wisdom and understanding in the execution of their office. Lord God of all, in a year of pandemic, which has brought many trials and tribulations to your people throughout the world, be with us as we think about all that has changed this year. Help us to trust that you are always with us. Be close to us as we remember those who have died in the knowledge that they are at peace with you. We pray for an abundance of neighborliness and goodwill to reach out to others with kindness and care so that hope shines out in every heart and home. In this holy season of Passion Tide, as our eyes are turned towards Christ's suffering and death, we pray for all whose lives are scarred and wounded. We pray for families and communities bound by cruelty and oppression, and especially for the war-ravaged peoples of Syria, of Yemen, and for all who live without hope. We pray for wisdom and discernment for our government as it endeavors to guide this nation through the ramifications of the coronavirus pandemic. We give thanks for staff working in the NHS and caring organizations, and for those who have worked to deliver and administer the vaccination program. We pray for your inspiration and guidance in our daily life and work as we strive to bring about your kingdom here on earth. And all of this we ask in the name and through the mediation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We bring our prayers together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. is in the name of the Lord, heaven and earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and forever. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always.